It's a hot one, guys. I got the air conditioner running. Got to cool down the room before I film this thing. Another one from Polar. They've been busy lately. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dave from Chase's Summit and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Polar Unite Fitness Tracker. This device launches today, uh, hopefully if I upload this video on time, June 30th. Polar did send this unit out early for me to review, so I've been wearing it for a few days. But as always, this is not a sponsored video and I'm allowed to give you my full unbiased opinion about this device. That said, I've got limited experience right now because I've only been wearing it for a few days, but I have been wearing it to sleep, I've been working out with it, and I've also been running with it. So I think I've got a pretty good opinion on who this watch is for. So who is it for? Before we get into it, if you like fitness and outdoorsy gadgets, consider hitting that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all my recent videos. And if you found this video helpful, or at least entertaining in some way, give me a thumbs up down below. I really appreciate that and it helps my channel grow. Okay, so what is the Polar Unite? Well, it's a fitness tracker. It's basically a slimmed down version of the Polar Ignite or even like the Vantage M watch, but there's one major catch here. The Polar Unite does not have a GPS chip inside. Now, a lot of runners might be writing this off right away, but there is an option here. You can still record a run with the help of your smartphone, and I'll get into that in a little bit. The good thing is this comes in at a really competitive price point at just $149, and you get a lot of features for that price point, and it's at the sacrifice of that GPS chip. At $149, this is the least expensive of the current Polar offerings when it comes to fitness trackers. The build quality of the Polar Ignite is pretty good. It's made completely out of plastic. There's no metal on here at all. Uh, however, the one button on the side here does appear to be like a stainless steel or something. The lens of the watch appears to be some sort of mineral crystal or gorilla glass they didn't specify. And around the back of the watch, we have the Precision Prime 2.0 heart rate sensor that we saw back on the Grid X a couple weeks ago. But there is a change here. On the Grid X, wait, let me go get it. On the Grid X, the heart rate sensor is kind of raised up a little bit, but on the Polar Unite, it's actually flush with the back of the watch. And I much prefer this. It makes the whole watch feel a little bit lower profile and it's not really j jabbing into my wrist at all when I'm wearing it. It's very very comfortable. As far as the size of the Polar Unite, it's about 43 and a half millimeters in diameter and about 10 millimeters thick on my calipers. The weight of the Polar Unite is also very low at just 32 grams. You barely notice you're wearing it on your wrist. It's super comfortable. Now I'm used to wearing a pretty bulky watch with my Garmin Fenix 6 and even the Polar Grit X is much bigger than this. It's small enough where I think even people with smaller wrists won't have an issue wearing it. And I do like that this is a budget fitness tracker, but it still has that round front to it. So it does come off as just like a regular watch you could wear at work or whatever. The Polar Unite is also rated with a WR30 water rating. That's a water resistance of 30 feet. So it's okay for bathing or swimming. You just can't go like deep water diving with it. Overall, it feels pretty premium. Even though it's plastic, it feels pretty robust. Polar includes a silicone strap in the box and it comes in two sizes right in the box, which is pretty nice if you have a larger wrist. So the bands come in all sorts of colors and they sent along a whole bunch of colors for me to try out. I personally want to give this uh, pink color a shot. I have mixed feelings about the band on the watch. This is, has kind of like a peg in hole design where you have to wrap it around your wrist and then you force this little peg through a hole and that's what locks it onto your wrist. Uh, for me, I just don't have the dexterity to like get a good fit with this. So I kind of have to struggle with it a little bit to get it on. And then, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a tricky thing to get on and off. There it is, I got it on, don't worry. Once you do get the strap on, it's actually really comfortable and I do like the look. It's pretty low profile because the extra strap kind of slides in underneath the main strap. I do have a little bit of concern about this band. If you don't get the proper fit, you're not gonna get accurate heart rate readings. So you gotta make sure you really get it tight and getting it tight can be a challenge with this type of band. Another design departure on the Polar Unite is its charging cradle. All you need is this little tiny plastic clip. Uh, previously on the Ignite, the Vantage Series and the Grid X, they all shared the same charger little round kind of paddle cradle thing with a magnet in it. And this worked pretty well. I, I didn't have any real issues with this, but changing the design means that it's not a universal charger anymore. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe they're gonna be using this little clip moving forward. The interesting thing about this little clip is that it's got the USB port built right into it. So you don't need an additional cable. You literally clip this on your watch and then it plugs directly into a USB port, just like a thumb drive or something like that. 
I like the idea of a universal charger for the whole brand because it, they're a lot easier to find on like Amazon or whatever if you need to replace them. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up the Polar Unite is this display. It's a 1.2 inch OLED display, which has really vibrant colors. It's very bright. The blacks are very black and the whites are very white. It's a really nice looking display. Unfortunately, this is not an always on display. So you gotta do the little wrist flip to turn the display on and off. Uh, I found that it works okay. I mean, admittedly, I get annoyed with these type of devices where you have to flip your wrist to turn it on and off, but I know a lot of people that are used to it, especially if you've used like an Apple Watch or anything like that before. When you do flip, it is pretty reliable, it will turn on, but in a regular smartwatch capacity, this is actually really functional. It's really nice to be able to read uh, text on, uh, text messages or notifications. All of that stuff is really nice to read on this display. The user interface on the Polar Unite is a lot like, not a lot like, I mean, it's identical to the Polar Grit X, the Vantage, and even the Ignite. They're all almost exactly the same. So if you come from another Polar device, you know exactly what to expect here, minus a few of the features. The home screen or the watch face of the device gives you your time and date, obviously, but you can also swipe sideways through various widgets. The widgets include uh, your activity for the day. That's just a basic summary of your steps and calories burned. You've got your current heart rate and a max and min. You've also got uh, your last training session. You can click and see your last run or workout. You've got your sleep status, and this is really cool. So Polar is probably class leading when it comes to recording your sleep metrics. This is uh, really accurate. I found that even when I get up to go to the bathroom or whatever, it picks that up and it reflects it in my sleep status. So Polar will give you a sleep score for your previous night's sleep. That gives you an idea of how well rested you are. And then we've got FitSpark. And FitSpark will take your previous activities data and trends, and it will su suggest companion workouts to accompany your last activity. For instance, if you went on a really long run, uh, it might suggest that you do some mobility training the next day. And this can be helpful for a lot of people who don't really know how to train. Uh, this can make valid suggestions based on your trends and your activities. So it's a pretty cool feature to have. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, you get into your notifications panel, and this will give you all of your notifications from your phone. So Facebook, uh, Google Hangouts, iMessage, whatever you got uh, will pop up here. And I have found if you are playing music on an Android device, uh, you can control your music. You can skip forward or back tracks right from the watch but this doesn't work on iPhone for whatever reason. And then swiping down from the top of the display brings you into a little quick menu, gives your battery status, you can put it in an airplane mode or do not disturb, and you can also lock out the touch screen if you're like taking a shower or whatever. A single click of the button brings you into the main menu, and from here you can start a training session, you can do a breathing exercise, which I'm not gonna talk too much about. Starting an activity on the Polar Unite, you just hit start training, uh, and then you can run through your various activities. So in here I've got running, swimming, mountain biking, cycling. So the range of activities you can record with the Polar Unite is pretty impressive, just like all the other Polar devices. Uh, within Polar Flow, which is the ecosystem that this device works on, you can arrange hundreds of different kinds of workouts from tennis to volleyball. And that's a really cool feature about the Polar products. They really cover all of the activities and they even have custom activities for things they can't think of. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. GPS connectivity with the Polar Unite. Can you do it? The long answer is yes. The short answer is yes. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Polar sacrificed the GPS chip to bring the price down on this product. Instead, it can use the GPS connection from your phone in order to record GPS activities, which isn't all bad. Just by having your phone paired with the watch, it does this automatically, you don't even have to think about it. One thing that's super important to know is that when you're using a watch like this that's based on your phone's GPS chip, it's all about where your phone is while you're running. If you've got your phone buried in a backpack, it's gonna get a really bad GPS signal and that'll be reflected in your data. Since the watch isn't doing the work, you gotta make sure that your phone is exposed to the sky in some way so it can get that GPS lock. So to test this out, I went on a series of runs uh, on the road and on the trail, and I got mixed results. For comparison, I also wore a Garmin Phoenix 6, which is an $800 GPS watch on my right wrist, and the Polar Unite on my left wrist. On my first run, which was a road run, I had my phone in the back of my shorts and the small of my back. It's kind of a pouch designed for a phone. So I had a really good connection with the GPS signal, and that's reflected in the data as you can see here. The Garmin Phoenix 6 is kind of all over the place, whereas the phone was getting a really solid lock, and this was an out and back run. So seeing the lines right on top of each other like this is a really good indication of an accurate GPS track. I know that my phone does smooth my GPS course a little bit, but I think it did a really good job here. 
Now on the flip side, I did the same test in the woods during a trail run, except this time I had my phone in my hydration vest in a pouch up front, and it was kind of under my arm, so I don't think it had a really good connection, but it was a convenient spot to have the phone, so I left it there. And by the end of the run, the Polar Unite had an extra mile of distance tacked onto it, and I think that's just from the GPS deviation over time. Whereas the Garmin Fenix 6 was pretty reliable here. So yeah, it's all based on where you put the phone, on how accurate your GPS track will be at the end of the run. In terms of heart rate accuracy, I did the same test going on the same runs, wearing the Garmin Fenix 6 on one wrist, the Polar Unite on another wrist, and also the Polar H9 chest strap for a baseline of comparison. The Bluetooth chest strap from Polar is super accurate, and I had that paired directly to my phone. As you can see here, the Polar Unite does a great job here. Uh, the heart rate is mainly staying in line with the Polar H9 chest strap. Uh, the Garmin Fenix 6 is not perfect by any means, so you can see that it has some dips and some peaks that aren't really representative of what the heart rate strap is doing. And overall, I think the Polar Unite outperformed the Garmin Fenix 6 by a pretty big margin in the testing I've done so far. So yeah, I think it's got a pretty good heart rate sensor. Again, you gotta wear it tight, and that's where that strap comes into play. You gotta make sure you get a good fit with this watch. But if you have a good fit, I think you'll get pretty reliable heart rate data. Now actually, usability while you're running with the Polar Unite took some getting used to. First of all, that always off display it's kind of frustrating to me i don't like having to do the wrist flip to turn the thing on and off to be able to glance at my metrics to see how far i've run and also i've noticed that there's a weird lag uh, from the time the screen turns on to the time the numbers update it shows the numbers from the last time the screen was on for like a split second and it had me a little bit confused what my heart rate was because i was walking and then i'd look at it and it would say 170 for beats per minute and that didn't make sense but then it would update down to 100 uh, so yeah something going on there hopefully they, they can fix that with firmware the screen is super bright so in direct sunlight you can read it but it isn't as good as like a transflective display on my other watches still though totally usable for running and i think for the right person this might be a good fit in terms of battery life kind of a mixed bag uh, in standby or smartwatch mode i'm getting like two to three days before it needs to be charged again now during gps activities this is kind of weird because it actually drains your phone battery along with the watch battery so after a three hour long run the other day the watch itself lost 13 percent of battery life which is totally fine however my phone lost about 50 percent of battery life which is a pretty big hit i mean that is a pretty long run i don't think most people buying this kind of device might be going in these kinds of runs something to keep in mind that your phone battery is affected by using it for GPS activities. Now, one big selling point for the Polar Unite is going to be the ecosystem. You get access to Polar Flow, which is probably my favorite ecosystem for any fitness tracker. There is a smartphone app and there's also a web environment. There's so much information in there. You can really digest and go into detail with your sleep metrics and your running and your activity data, your steps, everything is really well laid out. You can export from there. You can sync with Strava and Training Peaks and other third-party programs. I'm not gonna go too deep on the ecosystem here. If you wanna learn more about that, check out my other videos about the Polar Grid X or the Ignite. As a whole though, it's really good and it's probably one of the biggest selling points for the Polar Unite as this is the cheapest entry to that ecosystem. All right, so at the end of the day, who is the Polar Unite for? Well, I think it's the right fit for a lot of people. If you're a casual gym goer or a crossfitter or you know somebody who just casually works out and you just wanna get a good reading of your heart rate data and your wellness over time and your sleep metrics, the Polar Unite is a great option. It's kind of a do-it-all device, but if you're a hardcore runner, you're somebody who runs three, four, five times a week and you really want that embedded GPS chip in the watch without using your phone, I think there's other options in this price range that might suit you better. Even the Polar Ignite, which is a step up from this, I think it's only $50 more and that gets you the GPS chip in almost the same form factor. There's also the Fitbit Charge 4, which has a GPS chip in the same price range, but doesn't have all the great features that the Polar Unite have. Still though, I think a lot of people might find a lot of value in the Polar Unite and its unique features. All right, folks, that's all I've got for today. If you're interested in picking up a Polar Unite or any of the other devices I mentioned in this video, I'll have links down in the description. Those are affiliate links to Amazon and they will help support my channel at no additional cost to you. And I really appreciate it. And comment down below if the Polar Unite interests you. I'd love to hear from you and why you're interested in picking up this watch. Be safe, train hard, be well. I'll see you next time. Oh,